Olavo de Carvalho, 1947-2022, a prominent Brazilian philosopher, recently passed away on January 2022, leaving behind an extensive philosophical legacy penned in Portuguese. Unfortunately, English translations of his work are not yet available. Carvalho's profound impact on political theory reshaped the political landscape of his homeland, Brazil. Much like Socrates and Plato, his ideas garnered both admiration and opposition. In the realm of political thought, Carvalho's perspectives faced criticism, leading to the formation of adversaries who persist in tarnishing his reputations. His ongoing opposition poses additional challenges for English speakers seeking to comprehend the true significance and brevity of Carvalho's intellectual contributions. This video essay serves as an impartial endeavor to highlight the major achievements and tenets of Carvalho's philosophy. Its aim is not only to illuminate his ideas, but also to bridge the gap for English speakers, offering a clear understanding of his work amidst obstacles posed by detractors. Moreover, it strives to extend the reach of Carvalho's philosophy out of the underdeveloped landscape of Brazil intellectual discourse. On the words of Carvalho himself, By temperament, I am somewhat refractory to the systematic and academic presentation of my thoughts, preferring the essayistic form. However, this does not mean that there is not, in my work, a very cohesive systematic background around a nucleus of very evident principles, whose varied application I exemplify in the approach to a thousand and one problems suggested by the circumstances. In fact, before writing this essay, this Carvalho's students, who speaks to you, thought that the biggest challenge would be translating the philosophy of Olavo de Carvalho into the language of Shakespeare. No, English wasn't a problem at all just as it would have been if writing French. I would have faced the same challenges with my beloved Portuguese. The real issue was the essayistic nature of Carvalho's production, navigate through the archipelago of works he left. Cultural Criticism A philosopher usually has a cultural environment where he extracts the raw material of the work. Usually this takes form of cultural criticism of society and its cultural productions around. All philosophers did it, from ancient Greece to modern times, and the cultural criticism as the most poor public part of the work of Olavo de Carvalho is the most known part of his canon, where he dissects the problems and vices of Brazilian and Western modern culture with his unique insights, as to conclusions and charming wit. Metaphysically speaking, the cultural criticism is not the core of any philosophical system, but its edge which touches the mundane facts of the world on daily basis. But Olavo uses it as a father for the development of his many philosophical intuitions. Olavo de Carvalho's work on cultural criticism takes various forms, ranging from numerous essays, some compiled in a collection of books, to more formally structured books with more extensive theses. He can highlight points of his extensive works, like the criticism of the modern materialism, neoscepticism, Rancenism, modern hedonism, especially enlightening are his studies about the revolutionary mentality, the three grand blocks of modern world, new age, etc. A supplementary chapter of cultural critique focuses on cognitive parallax, a term coined by him which was vastly adopted on internet discussions. The cognitive parallax is widely spread in modernity. It is defined as the displacement between the axis of individual experience and the axis of theoretical formulation. In other words, it is responsible for the formulation of ideas that are contradicted by the very concrete conditions upon which the individual depends to formulate them. More importantly, Olavo was responsible by the revival of great Brazilian authors, neglected amidst the arid reign of Brazilian intellectualism, often overshadowed by political preoccupations that hindered their fertility. Philosophy of Conscience According to Olavo, his philosophy is a restoration of the notion of conscience, 
he defines philosophy as the unit of knowledge on the unit of conscience and vice versa. On certain sense, this is a reaction to schools which led to the situation described on his cultural criticism. The work of Olavo de Carvalho has a fundamental insight that only individual consciousness is capable of knowledge. Distinguishing a subject as it relates to an object in the theory of knowledge is one aspect. On the other hand, we also need to consider the historical existence of a conscious being, which, by definition, can only be individual. This gave rise to more implications, not of external origin, but rather as an inherent potentiality ingrained with human beings through the conscience. But, on the warm words of Olavo himself, The philosophy of consciousness, therefore, does not signify a philosophy of subjectivity, because consciousness is properly anti-solipsism, it is the acknowledgement of the reality of my actions in the world and of my own physical being as the author of these actions. The consequences of love explorations of the being and conscience translate on multiple philosophical intellections with many concepts he coined like knowledge by presence, circle of latency, radical intuitionism, amorous contemplation, confession method, self-evident intellection, symbolic dialectics, trauma of the emergence of reason, principle of authorship. Each one of them could be a book of its own, largely above the scope of this brief expository essay. The Twelve Layers of Personality The theory of the Twelve Layers of Personality was left largely incomplete due to the philosopher's untimely death. Unfortunately, some internet coaches seized upon it to generate content for their self-help courses, contributing to a distortion of its powerful insights. Characteriologically, the development of the psyche can be understood through 12 distinct layers, some integrative, forming a stable integrated framework, other divisive, establishing a rupture from the previous order, thereby facilitating a new order. The layer serves as the synthesis of the personality. Therefore, each transition from layer to layer represents a transformation of the entire personality. The whole acquires a new shape, without altering its individual parts. The layer, consequently, determines the purpose of the act, and this can only be explained through its purpose. The theory of layers can only be comprehended in terms of self-awareness, and each new layer constitutes a new pattern of self-consciousness. The theory of the four discourses. One of the most churchy works found in the book Aristotle on a New Perspective is the theory of the four discourses, a systematic and clever approach to human knowledge and action, especially the role of language in shaping and expressing action. The theory of the four discourses does attempt to describe the unity among the four types of discourse studied by Aristotle, the poetic, the rhetorical, the dialectical and the analytical, simultaneously seeking to reconsider the interpretation of the logical corpus itself. According to the theory, human discourse is a singular potency that actualizes in four ways, expressing general structures of possibility, the poetic, general structures of likelihood, rhetorical, general structures of probability, dialectical, and general structures of certainty, logical or analytical. Political theory. The fundamental premise of Carvalho on political theory is that power is the possibility of action in a general sense. But in politics, it has the strictly meaning the ability to determine the actions of others. In each civilization, the three types of power tend to crystallize into specific groups, respectively associated with economic power, military power, and intellectual or spiritual power. These powers can be exercised actively and passively and typologically correspond to the castes of producers, nobles and priests. Nowadays, in respective order, they would be represented by Western globalism, the Russo-Chinese alliance and Islam. Olavo distinguishes who is the true agent of history arts, transcending many human life, such as churches, dynastic families, the revolutionary movement, 
secret societies, etc. Olavo outlines the revolutionary movement, a phenomenon happening in Western history, whose origins can be traced to the apocalyptic ideas of Christianity and the influential heresy of Gnosticism. The revolutionary movement is the idea that articulate work between many individuals on a common political cause can really reshape of the world for a better future. An undying concept hammered even on children's essays, showing how deeply ingrained it is already in our society. The concept is better explained on the words of the philosopher himself. Revolutionary mentality is the state of mind, permanent or transitory, in which an individual or group believes himself to be able to reshape the whole of society, if not human nature in general, through political action, and believes that, as an agent or bearer of a better future, he is above all judgment for present or past humanity, only having satisfactions to give to the court of history. But the court of history is, by definition, the very future society that this individual or group claims to represent in the present, and, as this society cannot testify or judge except through this very representative of its own, he thus becomes not only the only sovereign judge of his own acts, but the judge of all humanity, past, present, or future. Qualified to accuse and condemn all laws, institutions, beliefs, values, customs, actions and works of all times without being able to be judged by any of them, he is so above historical humanity that it is not inaccurate to call him Superman. Philosophical Commentary Within the expansive scope of his work, Carvalho wrote a history of philosophy. Carvalho also authored books dedicated to commentating on other philosophers and essayists. These include Descartes, Machiavelli, Louis Lavelle, Edmund Husserl, Schopenhauer, René Guénaud, and last, but certainly not least, his compatriot, the Brazilian philosopher Mário Ferreira dos Santos. Olavo himself acknowledges the superiority of Santos, yet, unfortunately, Santos is less known than Carvalho, as his works remain somewhat concealed, necessitating a profound philosophical review, a skill that is scarcely available in Brazil. Furthermore, Santos' works are still under copyright and exclusively owned by a private publisher.